Well, Chris Popper, I'm joined by Dr. Mark Gauss, the superintendent of AOS 91. And you've had a great day today. You were uh, hobnobbing down in Augusta. It, it was a, a, a great day for our kids and, and uh, MDI High School. Um, we, um, Senator Brian Langley and uh, Representative Brian Hubble, uh, um, did legislative sentiments for um, our high school kids, uh, specific to uh, the basketball team right. uh, that recently won the state championship, and the indoor track team yeah. that won the state championship, and um, our drama yeah, the program, one act, the, one the One Act, act which also won a state championship. Right. So it, it was a very great day for MDI and, and our kids and our students, and so they were recognized in both the Senate and the House chambers. And I understand they also got a little civics loss and there was discussion of the Real <laughs> ID Act. Yes, they, <laughs> they did. Um, actually, the, the kids were in the, the gallery and uh, got to see uh, uh, government at work. And um, I think it was, um, it was, it was a great um, experience for them. So right. it was it was it was awesome. It was very good, very cool, and well deserved. Oh, to me to so proud! Three, three state championship teams. Yeah, so proud of our kids. Um, and uh, you know, th there's a lot of great stuff going on. Um, Arts Week in in our schools, and um, just um, yeah, it's amazing. All right, this time of the year is budget time. Yes, it's um, town meeting time. Everybody. And, you know, certainly one of the largest parts of the, the property tax mm. are, is the, the school budget. Yes. So you're in the process of, of going out. You're meeting with the, the various towns, the various mm -hmm. communities, the various, uh, I know there was a, a Bar Harbor session coming up. Mm -hmm. But all of this has to do with not only the 2017-18 season, uh, tax, tax year and the, mm -hmm. and the school year, but you're, as you've now been here, well, going almost on seven, eight months now. Actually, we're we're moving into ten months. Ten yeah. months. It, it only seems like yeah, that, right? yeah. Um, but you're you're now in the process of looking at the the long range planning because yes. not only do you have the the short term goals year mm -hmm. to year, but one of your jobs as the superintendent of the schools in conjunction with the school committee is to work on that long range, yes. that, that three, four, five, six, ten years down the road. Yes, sir. Um, they're, they're, um, so you're right, Chris. There's a tremendous amount of um, support for our students in our schools, both financially but within resources. And, um, you know, we'd like to think that... Um, the, um, the, the reality is our schools perform very, very well academically um, and, and programmatically. We don't want to take that lightly. Resources are not unlimited. We understand that. And we've heard um, in the short time I've been here um, about rising costs. And, um, and so the implications for that, we really need to take a, a step back, look at strategic planning long-range planning and, and that's not to say these aren't conversations about consolidating they're not conversations about uh, there's no preconceived plan what it is we want to educate the community as to what our schools look like how they're composed uh, from facilities to resources to all sorts of, of, of pieces there and then more importantly ask the question what do people value um, what are the challenges? And as we assemble all of that information, come back and report it out and make some recommendations. And those recommendations might be, depending upon what the community tells us and the staff and the students, might be, could look a little different. Could look very much the same. But I think it is an opportunity to take stock of where we're at and more importantly, where we want to go. So, I mean, there are... MDI, the high schools, has a little bit of a declining enrollment right now. Well, I, I think that's, uh, as Matt Haney says, it's, it's the urban legend because, um, you know, down the road as we have another discussion, we'll, we'll take a look at our, our enrollments. But um, in some respects, sure, the, the high point, I think about five, six, eight years ago, um, there, there was a number that was, I think, in the 700s. We're at 530 now. Right. Um, I don't project that will um, decrease appreciably, but 
it is it is accurate to suggest that or to say that we're smaller than we were a few years ago. Yes. But um, I, you know, I honestly, I, when I look at the high school, I was principal of a one thousand student school. This is a perfect size. Oh, no, no doubt. Yeah, but but to your point, um, as we look at enrollments that go down and costs that go up, that's a concern. MDI is very lucky in that uh, there are, are a large number of tuition students. Yes. That because of the, the school choice that in various towns, Trenton, Lemoyne, right. um, they have that ability to come to MDI and those towns pay right. a, a higher per rate than the um, essential services cost. Right. There's a, there's a, we're allowed to assess uh, tuition and then a, a, a surcharge for our debt service. And, and you're right. We're, I think it, two things. We're, we're blessed to have those students, but number one. Number two, for those students that have choice to choose MDI says a lot about our it's school. Very, and it's very competitive. Because, Absolutely. I mean, they can go to Ellsworth, they can go yep. to BAPS, they can go to to, to Sumner, they can go to yeah. India. I mean, there there are choices around, mm -hmm. and it's very competitive. I mean, well, you, you have a, a guidance counselor that goes out and, and meets with it, the students and th makes the case why you should come to MDI. Right, and um, I would tell you that the, the beautiful thing about that, too, um, when folks come and visit, uh, if you walk down the halls here, as you know, you can't identify a student to say that that's a Bar oh, Harbor student, right. a Lamoine student. The, the, there's a unique blend, and, and the culture here um, that I've observed is it's very warm and welcoming and inclusive. Yes, absolutely. And I think I think kids that do come from different areas, whether they come from the Unbridged Islands or um, you know MDI uh, proper, um, I, I, I it, I've seen them really gel. Yeah. Uh, no, no question, no question. All right, so tell us a little bit about your your long range planning. And so there's, what's happening. there's, um, you know, I really want to give credit to um, the board. Um, the elected officials really have spent a lot of time um, working on how, what these community conversations are, go are going to look like. So um, there'll there'll be exactly that we've assembled some some slides that we'll be putting out to folks and we'll also make these available on our website and brochures but really it tells about our school district it tells about our students it tells about the high school it tells about our staff and our resources human resources it talks about our facilities to include transportation infrastructure and then the educational context from a state and national perspective We'll have when, the when you mean state and national. Are you talking MEAs, SATs, well, we're, we're, or we're talking we're talking assessments, okay. absolutely. But we're also talking about things like um, proficiency-based education and some some really big picture items. Um, to, we're not assuming people do or don't know things, but we just want to put it out there and then have conversations with folks. And there's been a substantial change as you've gone away from um, ABC grading here yep. at the high school. Yep. And I'm not sure if that's spread down to the lower levels or if that's happening down the lower levels. It, but here it's proficiency-based. We want you to master that subject matter and then we move on. It's meeting kids where they're at and, and putting out the expectation for students to demonstrate what, they're, what they know and should be able to do, um, as opposed to rote memorization, here we are, chapter 2, page 42, everybody moving at the same rate, even though some students might be ready for more, and a student who's struggling isn't ready to move on. Right. So there, um, I believe that it's right for kids, yeah. but like anything else, change is hard. It's the human dynamic resist change. So, so within the with, within that piece, you talked about our elementary students. Yes, that will eventually cascade there. 
but it's not as radical as one might think because when you think about it, anybody that's been exposed to a post-secondary experience or it, the, the, the one, two, three, four system is no different than if somebody were in college and what's a 2.0, a 3.04, right. it's the same piece. The one thing I will say and, and having knowledge of this as my wife is a teacher, with this proficiency-based program, the teachers are working in a lot harder. Oh my God! Teachers are yeah, absolutely because um, I mean the, they're, it, they're it, touching it's, papers. They are. Uh, it's not just a one no, touch. It's it, it's multiple times possibly to ensure that the student has gained that proficiency in that segment. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you've got kids that are then in various degrees because. You can't. There's there's no child left behind in this in this instance. We may be moving on, but we're still working with that child to make sure that they maintain that or achieve the mastery of that program, mm -hmm. and then getting them up to speed in the in the next section. It's very complex, and um, um, the teachers are working very hard. Um, anytime you make a shift pro programmatically, curriculum wise, assessment wise. Um, you know, it, it 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 entails a lot of work and um, countless hours. And you're right; um, those pieces, the assessments, it, it's not as simple as a summative assessment. Here it is. Here's your grade. Many formative assessments that uh, give multiple opportunities for students to demonstrate that proficiency. So that's a piece. Right. But. Um, along with that, the goal is to come together, assemble these slides, and have folks go through a walkthrough, um, take a look, um, ask some questions, be able to take that information, and then we'll sit and we'll do some roundtable segments. Each community, from Frenchboro to Bar Harbor, will have their own unique um, opportunity to sit down and talk about schools and talk about Again, what people value, uh, what they have questions about, and what their concerns might be. Um, what we'll do is it'll take an hour approximately. So we're going to be very efficient with people's time. We'll have four essential questions that we'll ask. We'll have a facilitator. And then after we're able to assemble all that information, we'll report out. And we'll report out both individually to communities but collectively. And we'll replicate that for students and staff as well. And when I say community, we absolutely want parents, but we want people yeah. that don't have children in the schools because they're, they're part of our community and oh, we need to hear from they're, them. They're, yeah, absolutely. And that, uh, that's what I was going to ask you is that, I mean, so kids who are parents who have children here at the high school may not have children at the elementary level anymore. Right, right. So they've forgotten what it's like and the facilities at those elementary schools. Well, and, and, and Chris, we have a lot of um, summer residents. We have a lot of seniors. Um, they're invested in this community, and they're invested in our schools, and we want to hear from them. I want to hear from the business leaders. I want to hear from folks that, that um, uh, you know, make up the fiber and fabric of our community because, well, I'll give you a, a quick example of why it's important. Um, our marine services technology program that's coming that that's coming online. I'm mm -hmm. so proud of of that and um, th how that evolved. Basically, was people in the industry saying, "Look, there's there's a void here, and there's a niche that can be filled." I think there's an example of what we hope to get out of these conversations. If there's something we're doing that is valued and important. We need to hear that and continue that. However, if there are things that there are concerns about, whether they be proficiency education or other pieces, that we, we want to make, make sure that we have an awareness to that. Uh, the other thing I'm sensitive to, you mentioned it earlier, is, is enrollments. Um, we can't continue to go back or take for granted the support we have from the community. We're very blessed here with the resources that uh, we have for our schools. But with that comes a responsibility to make sure that we report out. And we look that it, we look to see if we can 
if we can create some efficiencies or we can create some some things that um, might be more efficient for kids, I'll, I'll give you a couple of quick examples. Um, uh, transportation might be one. Um, maintenance, food service, um, gifted and talented programming, um, other types of programmings where we potentially look at pooling some resources. And it doesn't have to take away from individual schools or community identities or none of that needs to happen, but we can still make sure that we network. And because there are some schools that we can't offer programs right. because the numbers are so low. And um, so I'm excited about that possibility. One of the things that you talk about in terms of um, <clears throat> maintaining resources or being respectful of resources mm -hmm. is that you just got a, a big grant for $35,000. Sixty-five. No, don't, let me, oh, don't short and let me short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you scared me for a second. I know. You thought it was cut in half. $65,000 yep. um, that Julie Kablinski and others uh, were able to go out and, and get, and you're one of the few in the state to get it. Well, it, it, it's actually, so yes, Julie Kablinski and um, um, her colleagues at the high school worked. This is an active learning center grant, and this is how competitive it was. Across the entire United States and Canada, there were approximately 960 applications. Only 15 were awarded. And throughout the entire... We were one of the 15, yeah. but we were the top three. Wow. And so, again, it speaks to the expertise we have here, but also the innovation. And um, the fact that folks don't take the resources for granted, they're going out and seeking additional pieces to further develop what we have. Going but this on. is all recognizing the fact that kids learn differently Absolutely. than they did when you and I were in yeah, school. Yeah, uh, and I think the perfect example of how that does speak to individual learning styles, but also with our proficiency-based education and the other pieces we talked about, programming and curriculum, the one-size-fits-all approach, it doesn't serve all kids well. We know that. So if, if we're going to do the best for all students, then we need to look at multiple measures. Have you got dates as to uh, when We're this working is? on okay. that, and so um, what I hope to do with you the next time we get together is... Uh, be able to, to share those. But I can tell you that we're looking to have those coincide um, with um, some of our scheduled meetings. Um, they may not all be at schools. They may be at various places, um, community um, entities, because we want to emphasize that these are our community meetings. But uh, we look to complete these in, in May, June, and we know that's a very busy time. But we also know summer but, but is even it's not busier. July and, August, and so, right. yeah, and our our goal is to have those so that um, by the fall we can report out. And um, Charlie Ray, our AOS board chair, is working with a number of individuals in the community. You'll see some articles that are come out in the paper. Um, they don't. By the way, this. This isn't taking a position one way or the other. This isn't about saying, here we are, there, we there, need to do X. Right. This is there's, about. There's no set. No. Uh, there's you know, there's an no outcome. secret plan. There's right. no hidden agenda. There's no selling X, Y, or Z. It is absolutely about taking stock of where we are, where we'd like to go, but more importantly, what are our resources? And, and again, having a different lens from the community. I'm sure there are going to be tons of things we're going to hear that we haven't thought of. Right. And, and you know, that investment will, will carry the day. So um, we're, we're excited about that. And I think what this will lead to, at, at my hope, um, a validation of what's going well, um, um, community-based awareness about what we need to do better, and then um, the foundation for st a strategic plan, as you said, for near-term, short-term, and long-term. If people uh, have questions, they have concerns, how do they get a hold of you? I um, mean, you're pretty easy to get a hold of, but... <laughs> um, there's, there's actually, the, the, the tried-and-true method is always, uh, you know, pick up the phone and call here at the superintendent's office. I return all my calls. What's but, the, uh, the number is? It's... Uh, uh, 288-5049. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my office is located right on the high school campus complex. Um, and if I'm in, I'm happy to see people, but I um, can always schedule an appointment. So um, uh, there's there's telephone, there's, there's visit, certainly email. Um, 
um, mark.gauss at mdirss.org. It's on the website. Yeah. Um, and speaking to the website, we're looking, because people process different ways, we're going to look at, um, and this isn't in my wheelhouse, but I'm going to work with somebody to do it, uh, a, some sort of a chalkboard where we can take the feedback and incorporate that. Um, and I will add, too, that residents don't just have to go to the um, community conversation in their community. Right. Um, you know, these are open to anybody, and and so, so if they, you're they in can, Southwest Harbor, you can go in at can, Northeast yeah. Harbor. I mean, it stands you to reason. You may not know how to get to Northeast Harbor if you're uh, from Southwest Harbor. It might feel yeah, odd. Of course, if I can find it, anybody I can. But, but I, I think folks are probably going to want to go to the one um, in their community. But everybody's welcome. Cool. Everyone's welcome. Thanks very much. Chris, thank you. And uh, I hope we, we can do um, more of these down the road, and we'll bring some, some guests from the schools and hopefully some kids too. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Thanks.